In front of the Panama Canal, traffic jams stretch for miles, disrupting the flow of international trade. This bottleneck, a consequence of technical glitches, limited space, and environmental challenges, threatens to impact global commerce. The Panama Canal, an 80-kilometer marvel connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, serves as a crucial artery for 14,000 ships annually, constituting 6% of world trade. Yet, the canal's efficiency is now compromised, posing a significant concern for the global supply chain. To comprehend the canal's current plight, let's rewind to the late 19th century, where our story begins in France. Ferdinand de Lesseps, hailed as the great Frenchman, envisioned a great project, the Panama Canal. In 1880, he founded the Universal Company of the Panama Interoceanic Canal, aiming to replicate his success with the Suez Canal. However, unlike the arid conditions of Egypt, Panama's dense jungles and formidable terrain proved daunting. Despite De La Sip's ambition, challenges mounted. The harsh tropical climate unleashed havoc, with tropical storms, mudslides, and diseases like malaria and yellow fever claiming the lives of thousands of workers. Financial mismanagement exacerbated the crisis, culminating in one of France's largest scandals as public funds intended for the canal lined corrupt pockets. By 1889, De La Sape's dream lay in ruin, bankrupting investors and sacrificing over 20,000 lives. Despite this catastrophic failure, the allure of the Panama Canal endured. Its potential had captivated explorers centuries earlier, and despite setbacks, the dream persisted, awaiting its redemption. The saga of the Panama Canal is one of ambition, tragedy, and resilience, a testament to humanity's relentless pursuit of progress during adversity. As we delve deeper into its complexities, we unravel the intricate tapestry of history woven into its waters, revealing the enduring legacy of those who dared to dream of bridging continents. In 1903, the United States' strategic interest in a shorter maritime route culminated in Panama's Declaration of Independence, backed by American support. This move secured a perpetual concession for the canal and a vital strip of land. Resuming construction in 1904, engineers opted for a lock canal design, complemented by crucial vaccinations against tropical diseases. Over a decade, this monumental endeavor harnessed innovative steam engines and railway engineering, engaging nearly 40,000 workers at its point, costing the U.S. approximately $375 million. The project spanned 79.6 kilometers, featuring two artificial lakes and three expansive locks, revolutionizing maritime passage. Despite its triumph, the canal's legacy bore the weight of sacrifice, with over 5,000 workers perishing during construction. Its inauguration on April 15, 1914, coincided with the onset of World War I, cementing American dominance over the pivotal waterway. Over time, discussions for the canal's transfer to Panamanian control gained momentum. By the late 70s, plans were underway to restore sovereignty to Panama, culminating in the canal's official handover in 99. Today, the canal stands as Panama's economic cornerstone, contributing significantly to its revenue. Passage fees ranging from ten dollars to $300,000 underscore its economic significance, attracting vessels of varying sizes, including the colossal Neo Panamax container ships. However, the canal's financial model faces uncertainty, compounded by operational challenges and escalating fees. Despite its enduring relevance, the canal's future hangs in the balance, prompting a reassessment of its visibility in an evolving maritime landscape. Reflecting on its construction, the canal's innovative design endures, leveraging artificial lakes and locks to navigate the continental divide. This enduring legacy symbolizes human ingenuity and perseverance, echoing through the canal's waters, connecting nations and shaping global trade. Nestled within the intricate web of the Panama Canal's engineering marvels lie two indispensable artificial lakes, including the renowned Alejuela, once dubbed Lake Madden, sustained by inland rivers. These reservoirs serve as lifelines, meticulously maintaining water levels crucial for orchestrating the passage of ships through the canal's 28-meter elevation above sea level. Anchoring this feat are the canal's locks, seamlessly guiding vessels through successive stages with the aid of locomotives. However, this ballet of engineering prowess comes at a cost. 
with each transit expanding a staggering 200 to 250 million liters of fresh water into the waiting arms of the ocean. Traditionally, the replenishing rhythm of abundant rainfall has danced to the canal's tune. Yet, the shadow of climate change now casts a pall, intensifying droughts and disrupting this delicate equilibrium. Since 2016, Panama has grappled with a surge in drought frequency, exacerbated by the relentless grip of the El Nino weather phenomenon. With rainfall but a distant memory, rivers and lakes have languished at critical lows, even during what should be the verdant embrace of the rainy season. As the specter of water scarcity tightens its grip, authorities have been compelled to act. Implementing tonnage restrictions on vessels aims to stave off the peril of grounding while scaling back daily transits from 40 to 32 seeks to ease the strain of dwindling water stores. Yet, these necessary precautions come at a cost, exacerbating congestion and elongating queues at the canal's entrance. The unfolding water crisis serves as a stark reminder of the canal's vulnerability to the capricious whims of climate change, demanding adaptive strategies to ensure its endurance amidst an uncertain environmental landscape. As stakeholders wrestle with the complexities of climate variability, the future of this vital lifeline teeters on a delicate balance, navigating the turbulent waters of sustainability and resilience. In contrast to the Suez Canal's direct passage, ships navigating the Panama Canal rely on a lock system, guided by tugs and skilled operators through treacherous waters. However, burgeoning demand coupled with limited capacity has led to extensive wait times, escalating from 4 to nearly 20 days by mid-August, as reported by Le Monde in early September 23. This congestion, reminiscent of headlines from 2006, underscores the canal's obsolescence in accommodating modern container ships, which continue to grow larger and wider. In response to this pressing need, Panama embarked on a monumental $6 billion expansion project in 2016, aimed at modernizing the canal. The new locks, designed to accommodate 95% of the world's ships, represents a significant leap forward in maritime infrastructure. Additionally, Lake Gatun underwent extensive deepening, facilitating increased daily transits. However, despite these efforts, the expansion has not alleviated the persistent water shortage exacerbated by drought. As Panama grapples with this water crisis, authorities have enforced passage restrictions for the foreseeable future. Yet, the stakes are high, with implications reaching far beyond maritime commerce. Persistent drought conditions threaten to divert ship owners to alternative routes, such as the Arctic Passage, as rising global temperatures render it increasingly navigable during summer months. The ramifications extend beyond commerce, impacting the livelihoods of local inhabitants who rely on the canal's artificial lakes for drinking water. As the region confronts the reality of dwindling water reserves, the Panama Canal stands at a crossroads navigating the delicate balance between sustaining economic vitality and preserving environmental integrity. Panama City and its surrounding suburbs rely heavily on the water supplied by the canal, serving over 2 million residents, nearly half of the country's population. Recognizing the urgency of addressing water demands, Canal Administrator Ricarte Vasquez unveiled proposed solutions to mitigate the effects of global warming. In mid-September, Vasquez outlined plans for a new water reservoir west of the canal, sourced from the Indio River. This reservoir, connected to Lake Gatun via an underground tunnel, offers a promising solution to bolster the water supply. However, the implementation timeline hinges on weather conditions, with estimates ranging from three months under ideal rainfall to two and a half years during persistent drought. Another potential initiative involves extracting water from Lake Bayana and redirecting it to Augment Canal Passage. While these proposals offer hope, they await consolidation, approval, and funding before realization. Recent updates indicate slight improvements with reduced wait times for vessels. However, Lake Gatun's water level remains alarmingly low, underscoring the unresolved nature of the crisis. As the situation evolves, stakeholders remain vigilant, navigating the complexities of water management in the face of climate uncertainty. While the challenges persist, concerted efforts offer glimpses of hope for the Panama Canal's sustainability and resilience. And with that, we conclude this video. If you found it informative, consider subscribing to our channel for more content. Thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.